I've got one person. I've got one person with me today, Penny, and the rest of you are on Zoom. So yes, a little bit of rolling your head from side to side and then finding a comfortable place to settle the back of your head on the floor. And then just feel a breath come in and feel a breath leave you. And just have a sense of the length of your body on the ground. And also be aware if there are any places where today you're feeling particularly stiff or creaky or any injuries. And then when you're ready, you're going to bend, if your legs are long, you're going to bend your knees and stand your feet on the floor. That's it. Have your feet a little distance apart, just in a comfortable position. And just before we start moving, feel the contact of your footprints on the floor. Feel the back of your pelvis on the floor. And then start to let your knees tilt a little bit to the right and a little bit to the left. Good. And just keep this movement easy and comfortable. So for most of us, I think probably all of us, this is a really familiar movement. And yeah, so whatever feels right for you today, letting your knees move from side to side. It can be a little movement or it can be a larger movement. But I think maybe the most important thing is to find a sort of rhythmic, yeah, like rhythmic as movement of flow with the movement. That's very nice. And just a couple more times from side to side. And then pause in the middle and let's do the variation where we cross our arms over our chest. That's the one good penny. And you're now with your arms crossed over your chest, you're going to let your knees and your elbows and your head all rock in the same direction. And then, so to the right and then to the left. If you find that you're rolling onto your hands or your fingers, you can slide your fingers on the floor away from you. And just see how this feels. So now it's very nice. Now it's the sort of rocking side to side across the back of your body with your arms crossed over your chest. That's it. Good. Oh, I can't quite see what's going with your arms now. I'm not sure. Are they crossed over your chest? Yes. Yes. Okay. Good. It's all the, it's all the black going on there. Very nice. So let your head move with this. And just a couple more times. This Hopefully we can find a sort of easy movement where you're just moving from side to side across the back of your body, good. And keep your wrists as relaxed as possible in this. Very nice. Good, and then come back to the centre, uncross your arms. Let your arms come to rest on the floor beside you. And let a breath come in, let a breath leave you. And then just come back a couple of times to just tilting your knees to the right and to the left. That's it, lovely. And see how that feels. So we're really just doing a few of these little movements to get ourselves moving to, yeah, just sort of, I suppose, soften everything up a little bit. That's nice. And then pause in the center and fold your knees into your chest. And hold around your knees. You could just have a couple of quiet breaths there, or you could do a little bit of rocking from side to side here or circling around the back of your pelvis. So that's it. whatever feels good at this point. Yeah, so a little bit of rocking side to side, a little bit of circling around the back of your pelvis. You could also take your legs up to the ceiling and give them a bit of a shake out. And you could add your arms in if you like.
Good. And then let your feet come back to the floor. So you're going to lie either with your knees bent or your legs long. And we're just going to, for a few cycles of breath, come to our breathing. So I think maybe bring your hands onto the front of your body and just gather your attention into your breath and feel the movement of your breath in the front of yourself. So feeling the breath coming in, feeling the breath leaving. And we're going to come back to a breathing practice that we did last week. And it doesn't matter if you were here or not, um, because it's very simple. And I want us to come back to it later on anyway. So if this is the first time you're doing this, don't worry. All I'd like you to do is we're going to add in one or two pauses into our out breath. So you're going to let a breath come in. So feel the breath come into your body. And then as you exhale, you're going to exhale a little bit and then pause breathing out for a moment and then carry on breathing out, maybe to the end of your exhalation and see how that feels. And then again, let your breath come in. And then you're going to try the same thing again as you exhale. So exhaling, maybe sort of half of your breath pausing for a moment and then carry on breathing out to the end of your exhalation. And then again, let the breath come in. Now the next, with our next exhalation, if you think you'll be happy pausing a couple of times in your breath, you could try that. So you can exhale, say like a third of your breath, pause, exhale a little bit more, pause again, and then keep breathing out to the end of your exhalation. But just all the time, notice how this is making you feel. Because um, our intention is always to release tension. And if pausing in your out breath is making you feel more tense, then maybe just do the one pause or maybe stop altogether. So I'd like you to have, let's have three more cycles of breath where you're pausing either once or twice in your out breath, so in your own time. So we just let the out, the in breath come in, no pausing, no fuss. And then you're exhaling and then pausing and then exhaling again and either one exhalation, one pause or two pauses in your out breath. And again, let the breath come in. And then again, this might be the last cycle of breath, just pausing once or twice during your out breath. And just checking in with how it's making you feel. And trying to just keep as sort of relaxed and easy with it as possible. Let's let that go now. Just feel a normal cycle of breath move through you. So no pausing, feel your breath come in and feel your breath leave you. And then if your legs are long, bend your knees and stand your feet on the floor. We're just going to do a little bit of tilting our knees one last time. So come back a couple of times to tilting your knees from side to side. And then what I'd like you to do is keep your feet standing on the floor, but bring your feet wider apart so they're as wide as your mat. That's it. Good. You can, that's it. Penny. You can feel when you get to the edges of your mat, can't you? And then start to tilt your knees from side to side with your feet this wide. That's it. Good. And just see how this feels. And sometimes in this one, you might find that your feet are a bit too close to your pelvis and it might be easier if you slide them slightly further away from you. So if you're feeling a bit restricted, good. That's movement. Yeah, that's nice. So in this one, you can keep on tilting your knees from side to side. And or if you liked, you could let your knees come all the way down on one side and have a couple of breaths there. 
That's it. And let your head roll in the opposite direction. Good. And if you feel that you need a cushion under one of your knees, you can put it there. That's fine. Then just have a couple of breaths with your knees falling down to one side. And then you can move your knees through the centre and down to the other side. And have a couple of breaths on the other side. And as, as well as that, yes, to let your head roll. So your head's rolling in the opposite direction to your knees. breath come in, let your breath leave you. That's very nice. And then just let yourself come all the way onto this side. So can you start to roll completely onto the side where your knees are? That's it. And then from there, come up onto hands and knees when you're ready. And let yourself settle on hands and knees. Good. So we're just going to do a little bit of cat and a little bit of tail wagging movements here. So you can start with your cat movements, rounding your back to the ceiling, dipping your spine down to the floor. Obviously just paying attention to your elbows, Penny. Mm -hmm. Good. So rounding and dipping and seeing how that feels through the middle of yourself. And whenever you're ready, you can also add in a bit of your tail wagging. So it might be that you just do that as a separate movement. I know some of you like to sort of put tail wagging and cat together. So a little bit of imagining you have a tail wagging your tail from side to side. You could do a little bit more cat when you're ready. And then in your own time when you're ready, you're going to move on into a dog pose and see how that feels. So it might be that you need to adjust your hands on the floor, tucking your toes under, exhaling, rocking your hips back over your heels. Come into dog pose and just, yeah. How does your dog pose feel? That's it. What do you need to do to help release the dog pose? That's it, Penny. So for you, I'd say just sort of quiet a bit in your front ribs. See if you can let the front ribs sort of soften back towards your body. I don't know if that makes sense. Yes, good. Good, lovely. That's very nice. So letting the head go, bending one knee, bending the other knee. Just have a few breaths in dog pose. From dog pose, you're going to fold into child pose. So, or kneeling if you prefer, as I know some of you do. So for the Monday morning bin, for <laughs> the Monday morning bin, Laurie is here, so I'm grateful for them. So a couple of quiet breaths in child pose or kneeling, let your breath come in, let your breath leave you. And then from child pose, you're going to slide your hands, your arms forwards on the floor. So you can see over there, please. So slide the hands forwards on the floor. So your elbows come off the floor and then come up onto hands and knees. And it's gonna be this long hands and knees. And at this point, maybe just have a look and make sure your hands are under your shoulders. They're not wider apart. Yeah, and I think in this, be careful with your elbows. So you're in a longer hands and knees and you're going to do this rocking forwards movement. So it's the sort of beginning of moving towards face up dog, but we're not going all the way. So it's just really, how does it feel to rock our weight forwards onto our hands? Good. Are you okay with that? Yes, yeah. okay, good. So just a few times rocking forwards and back. And you don't even need to think at this point that you're moving towards face up dog unless it feels really easy. It's more about taking weight through your arms and letting your body lengthen forwards a little bit. It's very much depending on how you feel today. And when you've done that a few times, then fold back into child pose again. So you can take the weight, the work out of your arms and just let your shoulders relax, your wrists soften and ease. Good. Very nice. 
properly. Let the breath come in, let the breath leave you. Good. And then we're going to think a little bit more about lengthening through the front of the body. And we're going to come into a lunge. So from hand, maybe if you come back onto hands and knees and step one foot forwards between your hands. That's it. And then just check that that foot is well planted on the floor. So it's parallel, the space between the big toe and second toe is pointing forwards. And then if you walk your back leg back a bit, so as well, obviously we're looking for our stretch through the front of the back leg thigh. We're also looking to keep our knee over our heel in that front leg of lunge. And you can have a few breaths here. And it just really depends how lunge is feeling. Sometimes it's really helpful to do a bit of easing in and out. So you could untuck your back toe and you could do a bit of your rocking back, keeping your chest close to your thigh and then coming back into lunge. So it depends. If you feel that a little bit of movement would be good in your lunge today, and it might be when you come back, depending that you need to move, adjust your hands and they move back a bit. So a little bit of easing in and out of lunge, if that's helpful. But obviously, yes, spending some time in, in lunge as well, so not just easing out of lunge. Ah, a breath or two. We will swap sides in a moment of lunge. So we'll swap sides on hands and from hands and knees, and then we'll we'll do a dog pose after our second side of lunge. So it might be that you want to ease back before you come on to side two of lunge. See, it's quite humid again today, isn't it? Mm. I've got that window open, but if you want more, uh, let me know. So bring your second foot forwards in lunge. And again, there's a little bit of organising yourself, walking your back leg away. That's it, sort of stepping the back knee back. And then checking your front foot is really well planted and your knee is over your front heel. So we can give our weight down, our pelvis down to the floor in lunge. But we could also do a bit of easing forwards and back. Yeah, so we're looking back when we rock back and then coming back into lunge. So obviously our intention of easing in and out is to be able to help settle in lunge more. But also it's, you know, if lunge starts to get a bit intense, that's it. Good. And I would just look down at the ground. Just make the focus in lunge, sort of the pelvis, the front of the pelvis. We could ease back once more and then maybe just another breath or two in lunge before we ease out completely. So in fact, from this second side of lunge, you've got the choice. You can either ease back, come onto hands and knees, go into dog pose, or you could go, some of you might want to go straight from lunge into dog pose. Your foot back, so come in. And have a little bit of a length of out in dog pose whenever you're ready. So I was just saying to Penny here that it's it feels very humid to me again today. So um, just obviously sort of taking your time if you find yourself getting hot. Very nice. So feeling wide across your upper back. That looks nice. That looks very nice to the spine. Very good. Good. Letting your head go. That's it. And whenever you've had enough in this dog pose, folding down into child pose again, or kneeling if you prefer. So just that's it, that's settling down, coming for a moment to feel the movement of your breath through your body. And from child pose, we're going to slither onto our bellies and we're going to do, do something different on our bellies. This will be familiar. We're going to come onto your belly. If you want to look at me first, you can. And you're going to be having one arm by the side of your body. And we're going to be pressing into one hand. And we actually did this last week. So, we doing? so lie, that's it. So lie down onto your belly. And organize yourself so you've got, you've got your forehead on the floor and you've got one arm down by, let's see, let's have the right hand standing on the floor and the left arm down by the side of the body. And you want to have your right hand standing on the floor so your elbow is off the floor, which sometimes means the hand needs to be further down your mat than your face. 
And then what you're going to do from here is start to press into that right hand and feel how your right shoulder lifts and let yourself roll on your forehead. That's it, good. And just repeat this a few times on that side. So press into the hands and then stop pressing into the hand. So letting yourself roll on your forehead as your shoulder lifts, good. So this is really um, nice movement for the upper back. And yeah, just trying to feel that what, you know, what, what's the active thing here is the pressing into the hands and everything else follows. Good, do that once more on that side and then you can swap, maybe just for a moment, leg, um, stop pressing you could have both arms down by your sides for a moment and just give your pelvis a little wiggle that's it that's nice and then bring your left hand to stand on the floor good so you can do exactly the same movement on side two now so pressing down into the left hand that's it feeling the left shoulder lifts in response and then letting yourself roll on your forehead. So don't let your head lift. If you're lifting your head up at the moment, you're adding something extra in. We will do that in a moment, but um, just let yourself roll on your head, which is also quite nice for the neck, good. Okay, so just do this a couple more times on side two. That's it. And then you can fold back into child pose for a breath or two. And then we'll come back onto our bellies again. Because I know for some, some of us, it's not the most comfortable place to be. So come back into child pose. Just let yourself settle there. Feel how your lower back can lengthen out. So particularly if you're not so happy on your belly. And when you've had a few, couple of breaths in child pose, we're going to come back onto our bellies. And this time, we're going to have both hands planted on the floor. We're going to do, I'm showing you now if you want to look, we're going to do a bit of rolling from side to side across the forehead. And we're also going to press into the both hands together and come into our little cobra. So yes, you can keep it little penny. <laughs> so, so when you're, yeah, back on your belly, you can give your pelvis a wiggle to start with if you like. That's it, very nice. And then both hands standing on the floor. And to start with, you're going to be pressing into one hand and then the other. So you're rolling yourself from, in a way from side to side. So as you press into one hand, that shoulder lifts, you roll on your forehead and then you press into the other hand. That's it. So this is a really nice movement again for the neck, for the upper back. So that's pressing into each hand in turn. And then we can pause in the center, let a breath come in. And as we exhale, press into both hands together and also lift our head. So we're coming into a little cobra. It doesn't have to be little. If it's easy, it can be bigger. But your elbows, I mean, so I was saying this to Penny last week, for most of us, if our, if our cubic bone stays on the floor, which it does in Cobra, our elbows don't straighten, but for <laughs> some people they do. So just make sure you're not going to a place that hurts your lower back. So you're exhaling, you're pressing into your hands, you're letting your head lift, you're coming up into a little Cobra. Good, keep your elbows gathered in. You might well have done enough by now. You can fold back into child pose or do one more if you like. Keep your elbows gathered in, keep your shoulders down, make sure your lower back is happy. And then yes, come, come back into, very nice one. Our interesting knee, just try one more penny, but let your heels roll out. That's it, so try and stay quite relaxed in, yeah, but always good, that's nice, well done. Okay, so folding back, very nice. That looked, yeah, that looked very nice to you there, that was. Folding back into child pose. And again, just let yourself have a breath or two there, letting your lower back lengthen out. 
And from child pose, you're going to come on into kneeling. So you've got two options for kneeling. They're sitting down on your heels or coming into this up kneeling. So whichever is more comfortable. Okay, and I know there's a few of you who are more happier up here. And wherever you are in kneeling, you're going to be swinging your arms. Good. Yes. Good. Well done. So either an up or down kneeling, swinging your arms. Just letting the arms be quite loose and free. And the other thing I'd like you to do in your kneeling is to do the one where you bring the backs of your hands together. This one here. Good. And give the hands a bit of a wiggle, a waggle. So really touch the backs of your, keep the backs of your wrists touched. Yes. Good. And what we're going to do from here is we're, come, we're going to come through plank pose and then dog pose and up into standing. So I just wanted your wrists and your hands to shake out, your wrists to feel prepared for plank. So for plank pose, come towards the front of your mat. So you've got room behind you on your mat for your feet. And settle yourself down. So your hands are shoulder width apart. And that's it, your hands are under your shoulders. And we're gonna take one leg back. So that's the easy part, the first leg of plank pose. At that point, make sure your foot is on your mat. And then see how is it, it is to add your second leg in. Good. And give yourself a few breaths in plank. You're looking down at the floor, just slightly ahead of your fingertips. Lovely. And then from your plank pose, whenever you feel ready, you're going to exhale and send your pelvis up and back into the dog. It's going to feel quite a long dog pose, so you can, uh, can then walk your feet in if you like. And it might feel slightly different dog pose. Your hands might be a little bit closer together than they are in dog pose sometimes. And that's fine, or you can adjust them if you like. And give yourself a few breaths in dog. And then from dog, we'll come walk the hands in towards the feet. Come into a forward bend and then roll up into standing. Penny, was that transition OK? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. So yes, in, if you have a couple of breaths in your forward bend, you can bend your knees, rest your elbows on your thighs, if that's better for your lower back. Or you can just let your arms hang. And whenever you're ready, whenever you want to come out of your forward bend, you can sink into your heels and roll up into standing. Good. I'm just thinking at this point, you might want to have a little shake out, maybe a drink of water. I have to have a drink of water. I was just thinking if I would like one. So we're going to, how are we doing? Yeah, we're going to do a few things in standing, starting with some shouldery things. So the first thing, there's no rush, but once you're, once you're settled, first thing is just sort of loose, easy, swinging twist. So it's swinging your arms, slapping them on your body, if you like, letting your feet move. Good, very nice. So we're going to do, yeah, we have a couple of shouldery arm things. So just sort of make sure that you don't over, overdo your wrists. So from there, let's settle down um, in, in standing. So have a little look at your feet and just setting your feet down so that they're a little distance apart. Your feet are parallel. And then bring your hands into prayer pose in front of your chest. So from here, you're going to let a breath come in and as you exhale, take your arms down and then up and touch your hands together in prayer pose over your head and just let your shoulders soften. And then from there, we're going to bring our hands onto the base of our neck. And then you're going to leave one hand there and the other arm is going to come out in a big circle out to the side, turning your palm back. And then your hand is going to come up behind you. It doesn't matter whether you can touch your fingers or not. Yeah. And then take the hand that's still on the base of your neck and do the same thing. So that arm comes out to the side. Good. You turn the palm back. And then the hand comes up behind you. So you're coming towards reverse prayer pose. But again, don't force your hands or your wrists. Good. 
And then come back to the first arm and that arm's gonna go up again. It's gonna travel up in a big circle and onto the base of your neck, good. And then the second arm is going to do that. And we're just gonna carry on in your own time, doing these circling movements, that's it. So we move through the sort of cow arms here where maybe we can touch our fingers, maybe not, doesn't matter. And then our arm comes out to the side and we move on towards a reverse prayer pose, prayer pose behind our back. And then we're back, that's it, back through cow arms. So just, yeah, carry on circling your arms, trying to keep this as comfortable as possible through the whole of yourself. So think about here being nice and quiet, Penny, that's it, good. And yeah, I think with these ones, they are quite tough. So just keep, is this, is this all right? You don't yeah, want to strain yeah. Good. Keep going. If you feel that when you come into your cow arms, this one, we're one arms up, one arms down, and you want to have a couple of breaths here, you can do. Again, it doesn't matter whether you're touching your fingers or if you want to have a couple of breaths anywhere, you can do. We'll, we'll just, um, if you are having a couple of breaths in cow arms, then do the same thing on both sides. And all the time, just check that through the front of your body, you're staying sort of nice and quiet and relaxed, particularly those front ribs. Good. Sheila, I'm just wondering if there's a reason why you're on your knees. So you, um, oh, you haven't got enough room. That's fine. <laughs> that's just saying, yeah, sorry. Okay, no, that's absolutely fine. Your roof. Well, good, good adaptation. Well done. Okay, come, come down and just give your arms a little swing out in front of you. And then let's come into a forward bend and we'll do the forward bend where we sweep our arms around the front of the, our feet, the sort of weeping willow one, to just really, yeah, let the arms feel loose and free. So you can sweep your arms from side to side around the fronts of your feet, very nice. Let your head hang as you do so. So this is where we imagine we're weeping willow, beautiful weeping willow tree trailing in the water. Sheila, you've done very well up to now. I haven't seen you have to resort to the knee, <laughs> being on your knees for anything else. <laughs> Good. So you could also then just have a couple of breaths in your forward bend, just releasing forwards after having gone from side to side. And then let's sink into our heels, come back up into standing. Good. And you could give each leg a little shake out when you arrive back in standing. That's it. And then settle your feet back down again. So the same little distance apart, having a look at your feet and then stop looking at your feet. And this time you're going to let a breath come in and take your arms wide. And then as you exhale, give yourself a hug. So wide out to the side rather than up. And give yourself a hug with your right arm on top. That's it. So we're going to come on into our eagle arms. That's the one. Yes, good. <laughs> good. Dropping the shoulders down away from the ears. If you like, you could do just the little sort of side to side turning of the elbows here. So remember, you don't move below the waist. You're just moving your shoulders and your elbows a little bit from side to side. And we are going to take this into a forward bend. Um, so you can step your, I always tend to step my feet wider for this one. Yeah, so maybe the, the sort of narrow edge of your mat width. Good, so you can sink into your heels. You, do, you can release your arms at any time. You don't have to keep them in eagle arms, but if you like to go forwards or you want to give it a go, you can sink into your heels, fold forwards, and then you've got this sort of added weight of your arms to lengthen out your spine. But whenever you want to release your arms, do so. And you don't need to remember which arm is on top because hopefully you just did the one I told you to. And so I will remember. So it's nice to let your arms go if you haven't done so already and just let them flop down to the ground. That's lovely. And then let a breath come in, sink into your heels, roll back up into standing. Good. Very nice. And then step the feet back so they're sort of our first distance apart, our mountain pose distance apart. 
And again, let a breath come in, take your arms wide, but keep the shoulders down, good. And then give yourself a hug with your left arm on top and drop your shoulders down away from your ears. Lovely. And then on into eagle arms on this side. And again, it can be nice to do that sort of little twisty movement. So the elbows turn a little bit to the right, a little bit to the left. Good. And then we can pause in the middle. We can step our feet a bit wider apart. Still keep the feet parallel. So maybe the width of the narrow edge of your mat, sinking down into your heels, folding forwards, letting your head go. Bending your knees if you like a little bit and have a few breaths there. And whenever you want to release your arms to the ground, you can do. Good. <sighs> That's it. So let your arms go, let your head go. Very nice. And then sink into your heels, roll back up into standing. And again, you might, when you come up, you might like to give each leg a shake out. So we can do a couple more standing things now. This is going to be taking a step forwards in front of us. So starting off with your feet a little distance apart and just having enough of your mat that you can step forwards on your mat. So you're going to step, doesn't matter, just step a foot forwards, doesn't matter which one. Good. And then, yeah, maybe don't do that too bigger. Yeah. Maybe Think about a comfortable walking step. And what you're going to do is just rocking your weight forwards and back. That's it, into your, so you can come onto the heel of the front foot and the ball of the back foot. That's nice. Good. And then in the moment we're going to settle down here. So I'm just gonna move slightly away from the wall. So we're going to swing our arms. So settle both feet down and have a look at your feet and just check that they're both pointing forwards. If you're feeling a bit wobbly, it might be because you need a bit more sideways distance but yeah, between the feet. And then, yeah, and I think for you, Penny, just make sure that you're not sort of hyperextending your back knee. Does that make sense? But yeah, 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 that's it. You're going to plant into your feet and you're going to swing your arms and try to stay steady. So this is, as I've often said to us people, this is a bit of a balance when we've got one foot stepped forwards. We're trying to feel steady here. And then we're doing a few things such as sort of challenging that ability. Okay. So we're swinging our arms, but we're not moving our pelvis. Good. Let's, um, let's try bringing the hands into prayer pose now in front of our chest. We can rest our thumb on our breastbone. And we're gonna to turn towards our front leg but again, not let ourselves move below the waist. So we're just turning the shoulders, good. Shoulders, ribs, shoulders, ribs, obviously the head. Keep the knees straight, but don't let them lock out. That's it, Penny, back leg, well done. Good, and then when you've turned as far as you can, on an exhalation, take your arms out at shoulder height. Maybe turn your palms up towards the ceiling and just let the shoulders drop down, good. And have a couple of breaths there. Very nice. And then release your arms, turn back to the center. And we're going to come into a forward bend here. So we're going to bend the front knee, but keep the back leg straight and just come to lean first of all. We can rest our forearms or hands on the front leg. And then we could go a bit lower. So you're bringing your chest close to your thigh in that front leg. And you're letting your head and your arms release down. And you're keeping, that's very nice, good. You're keeping your weight really in your heels, back leg straight if possible, good. Let another breath come in, let another breath leave you. And then sink into your heels, come back up into the standing. Good. Very nice. And then let's have a little bit of shake out. And we're going to do that with the other foot step forwards. So that's it. Step your other foot forwards. And again, just check that you've got that sideways distance so you don't feel wobbly. And then exactly, yes, a little bit of our arm rocking our weight forwards and back. 
Good, that's it. Ball of the back foot, heel of the front foot. And all we're trying to do here is just really drop down into our feet and feel our feet on the ground. And eventually we'll let the feet settle down. And then we'll, we'll do various movements like we did on the other side. So at this point, just make sure both feet are pointing forwards. Um, and our knees are straight, but not locked. So if, if the knees tend to sort of push back, that's nice, push back. You can always have them slightly bent. And we can swing our arms, but not move the pelvis. Good. You can also move your head if you like, but if you feel too dizzy. Good. Okay, let's do the one. I'm just going to step my other foot forward so I don't turn away from you on Zoom. Let's do the one where we had our hands in prayer pose in front of us. That's it. And then you're turning towards your front leg again. So again, that's it. You're trying not to move the pelvis. You're trying just to move the ribs, the shoulders, the head. I've got my fingers on my breastbone. Good, that's very nice. And then when you've twisted as far as you can, as you exhale, arms come out at shoulder height, palms facing up, elbows relaxed, shoulders down. Good. Let a breath come in, let a breath leave. Release the arms, turn back for, to the front again. And then come down into your forward bend on this side. So the front knee bends. We fold forwards over that bent front leg. And then we can release down towards the ground, our chest coming close to our front leg thigh. <sighs> and just have a breath or two there. Good. And then you can sink into your heels, come back up into standing. And have a little shake out of legs. So we're gonna do a couple of standing balances now from this same foot position. The first one's going to be a simple one. The second one, don't you feel be too complicated. Um, so come back again to stepping your first foot forwards. And you're gonna come back to your just rocking your weight forwards and back. And we're going to bring our hands into prayer pose and have your thumbs resting on your breastbone. And so in a moment, we're going to bring all of our weight onto our front foot. And we're going to bring the back foot to stand on the front foot. And just see how that is. That's all we're doing this time. Good. Very nice. And just let yourself settle there. Let your shoulders drop. Just see if you can settle and quieten. So, that's very nice. It's always a little bit perhaps of anxiety and anticipation with balances. You don't quite know how they're going to turn out. Good. Very nice, well done. Come back down, have a little shake out. We did the same thing on the other side. So, well done. So far, so good. Let's step with the other foot forwards. So I'm trying to avoid, I've got the sort of creakiest floorboards in my lounge, or the worst floorboards, just to the point where I have to have my mat. So that's it, a little bit of rocking your weight forwards and back. And then your hands could come, that's it, prayer pose at your breastbone, at your heart. And then whenever you're ready, all of your weight's gonna come into your front foot, and you're going to bring your back foot to stand on that front foot. And then just again, sort of softening and settling here. Just, you know, what happens. Be feeling our breath flow in, feeling our breath leave. Good, very nice, come down. A little shake out. Well done. So we're going to sort of use the same starting point, but do a different balance. And um, yeah, I'll just talk you into this because I think most of you know this. And you can just always look at me and then to go. So actually, step your first foot forwards again, and then you're going to bring your hands into prayer pose. So we can start with your hands in prayer pose. So yeah, you can come along as much as you like. 
Ah, and so from here, what we're going to actually do to start with is bend the front knee. And we're then going to bring our weight onto that bent front knee. Well, I've also I've bent my back knee, so I'm in this sort of funny, exaggerated running position. And then from here, we're just starting to reach backwards. So we start to straighten the standing knee and lengthen the raised leg back behind us. We don't have to tip that far forward. So just sort of, how do we get to in that one? Good, that's nice. And then start to reach back behind you with your back heel, good. Well done, Rosie, very impressive to be able to stroke a cat and balance. <laughs> Beautiful, really nice. That's it, that's it. And then send that heel back towards the window. Well done, really nice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so this is a balance where we might sort of capture it for a moment. And then we come back up again. Well done. <laughs> so, yeah. We're definitely perhaps a little bit less in control with that one than we were in the previous one. So we'll try the other side. So step your other foot forwards. And again, so slightly differently, we're starting by bending our front knee. So we've got our hands in prayer pose. We're bending the front knee. So we're sinking into that front foot. And then we're lifting the back foot and that knee's bent. So we're in this funny sort of cartoon runner position. And then we start to sink into the standing heel and reach back behind us with the raised heel and maybe a little bit of tipping forwards. So eventually, eventually both legs straighten out, maybe. Good, very nice, well done, yes. <laughs> Good, brilliant. Well done. Yes, and then your back all right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and then we'll, I think after that, we could probably all do with a forward bend. So we'll come down to a forward bend, dog pose and child pose. So you can come towards the backs of your mat. You can maybe just feel yourself in standing for a moment. Yes, do you have drink of water if you want to. And then from standing, you can let yourself roll down into a forward bend. Give yourself a few breaths in the forward bend. If in your forward bend, it would feel nice for your lower back to go on into a squat. By all means, you can do that by bending your knees, coming down into a squat. You don't have to, that's an option. Otherwise, from your forward bend, you're going to be walking your hands forwards into dog pose. And just having a few breaths in dog. And yeah, just seeing how your dog pose feels now, if it feels enjoyable or that you could make it enjoyable by bending your knees or refocusing on your breath, then enjoy two or three more cycles of breath in dog. From dog, whenever you're ready, you're going to fold down into child pose. And just settle onto the ground. Let the breath come in, let the breath leave you. Good. So from here, we're going to, yeah, we're going to come and find a bit of wall space or the, in front of a sofa. So Penny, you could go in front of that grey sofa, move your mat up there um, and take your mat with you so that we can use the wall behind us to help support our spine to do a few sitting things and a bit of sitting and breathing. And Sheila, yes, you've got an arrangement, haven't you, by your, your um, beam that works. And the first thing you're going to do is to take your legs long and wide. So just, yeah, take your time to move in front of some sort of support. 
Yeah, that's very nice. And so we've got the wall behind us, or a sofa is great because you haven't got something to lean your head on, which is good. So your head is on top of your spine. Lovely. And if we've got our legs long and wide, we can just let the legs roll a little bit. So you've got the advantage of having done the earlier on. <laughs> good. So we're just going to do a couple of sitting positions with our spine supported. Um, and a little bit of quiet breathing, and then we'll come back to our pausing breath, our biloma breath in a moment. Yes, if you're someone you know, like you, Mel, who's, if you're someone who's very happy here with your legs long and wide and wants to do a bit of folding forwards, you can do. So it's really up to you. You could sit and use the wall or sofa to support your back, or if you felt that you wanted to go forwards. I know some of you like to do a bit of swaying from side to side. But also it would be good while you're sitting here to just give yourself a little bit of time to settle down and maybe rest your hands on your thighs or wherever you are and just gather your attention into your breathing. So maybe closing your eyes and perhaps for three cycles of breath, just feeling the flow of your breath through your body. So feeling the breath come in. As the breath leaves you, you could let your shoulders soften and relax. Good, very nice. And then again, receiving your inhalation. And as you exhale, again, let the shoulders soften and relax. Feel the weight of your pelvis and legs on the ground. You'll have one more cycle of breath there. And again, if you're someone who likes to fold forwards, by all means, you can fold forwards. So one last time, feeling the breath come in. So receiving that inhalation. And then as your out breath leaves you, softening the upper body, feeling heavy through your legs and pelvis. And then from here, let's bring our legs into cobbler pose. And I'm always thinking, if we're in the room, we sort of lean back. It's a little bit, yeah, we might need to use our hands here. Let's bring our feet into cobbler pose and just see how this feels. So it's, and you've got options in cobbler pose about how close to your pelvis do you bring your feet. So they don't have to be really close in. It's more comfortable further away. And we've got the wall or the sofa supporting us here, which can be really helpful. So we don't have to worry about our spine. And again, if you're someone who likes to fold forwards in this, you could certainly do that. So again, I'd just like us to have maybe three cycles again of sort of quiet breathing. The hands can rest on the thighs. And let your shoulders drop. Be closing your eyes and feeling the movement of your breath through your body. So perhaps in this cobbler pose, we could just have a sense of where do we feel our breath? So when we breathe in, where do we feel it? When we breathe out, where do we feel it? There's no right or wrong about this. It's just about finding this point where we can feel our breath most clearly within us. So one more cycle of breath, I think. Let the breath come in, let the breath leave. And then from here, you've got a choice because we're going to come to our biloma breathing now. So you could either take your legs long again, but maybe not as wide, just a little bit wide. So think about being really comfy. Or you could cross, you do a sort of cross, you know, some version of a cross leg sit. Yes, I, exactly that one, Penny, I think it's quite good. So there's sit half snow where one heels in front of the other. You can cross your ankles. You can even sit in a sort of half lotus if that suits you. But just, yeah, be, be however is most comfortable now so that we can focus on our breathing and maybe it'll work the noise of the children. <laughs> <laughs> so we can focus on our breathing. And if it's helpful to have your hands on your body, on your belly or a hand on your chest, 
um, by all means, you can do that. So we're going to do exactly what we did at the beginning of class, adding in one or two pauses to our out breath and just seeing how that feels. So you can let your breath come in. So feel the inhalation expanding within you. And then start to breathe out. Breathe out a little bit and then pause your out breath for a moment. And then just keep breathing out a bit more. And you either breathe out to the end of the breath or you pause again. And then you carry on breathing out to the end of your out breath. And then let a breath come in. And then again, start breathing out. Breathe out a little bit and then just pause your breath just for a moment, very relaxed. And then carry on breathing out again. You're seeing how it feels to try a second pause and then breathing all the way to the end of your exhalation. Let's try three more cycles of breath where we add in one or two pauses. Letting the breath come in, exhaling a little bit, pausing the breath, exhaling a little bit more, pausing the breath again, exhaling to the end of your out. letting your breath come in. And so with your next exhalation, if you were comfortable with two pauses, you could try adding a third. If two pauses felt too much, then just pause once in the middle of your breath. That's absolutely fine. So one more cycle of breath where you're adding in one or two or three pauses, receiving your inhalation and then exhaling a little bit, pausing, exhaling. letting go of your pausing breath, your biloma breathing, and just come back to a cycle or two of normal breath. And feeling the weight of your legs and pelvis on the ground, letting your shoulders drop. Good. And we're going to come to lie down. We're just going to do a few simple movements lying on our backs, and then we're going to settle down quietly. So maybe, yes, move your mats back towards the middle of the room, away from the wall. And settle down onto your backs when you're ready. And yes, it's not time immediately to, <laughs> to go to sleep. We will do a few easy things and then we'll finish with a little bit of breathing. So the first thing to do is probably just to settle on your back and it's usually a pleasure. And once you're settled on your back, you might like to let your head roll to the right and to the left. Good. Just easing your head from side to side. And let your arms rest either on the floor or on the front of your body. So from rolling your head to the right and to the left, find a comfortable place to settle the back of your head on the floor. And let a breath come in, let a breath leave you. And if your legs are long, you're going to bend your knees and stand your feet on the floor. As you do so, take a moment to feel the contact of the back of your pelvis on the floor, the contact of your footprints on the floor. And then come to letting your knees tilt to the right and to the left. That's very nice, good. And as you do so, feel how the weight shifts side to side across the back of your pelvis.
And then what I'd like you to do is stop tilting your knees. And then come to tilting your pelvis a little bit on the floor. So can you tip your pelvis towards your face and feel your lower back flattens out and the bottom of your pelvis comes off the floor? And can you tip your pelvis away from your face so your lower back arches a little bit off the ground? Let's just see how it feels to do these two, that's it, these two tilting movements of the pelvis. Very nice. And then in a very easy and relaxed way, you can take the one where you're tipping your pelvis towards your face and the bottom of the pelvis comes off the floor. You can take that on into bridge pose, just maybe rolling up and down three times in a very sort of easy, relaxed way. So sinking into the feet, tipping the pelvis towards your head, and then let the whole of the pelvis come off the ground and some of your spine pick up. And you can roll your spine back down onto the ground, settle your pelvis. Good. Perhaps that's it, perhaps three times in just this easy, relaxed way, rolling up and down into bridge pose, sending your knees forwards over your feet. Good. You don't have to go very far. Just letting the pelvis come up, letting some of the spine come up and then rolling back down again. Very nice. So keep really steady through the feet, sending the knees forwards over the footprints. Good. That's it. Keep the arms and hands really soft and relaxed. And when you've done that three times, you can fold your knees into your chest. And hold around the top of your knees. Just do a little bit of rocking across the back of your body. You could take your legs up to the ceiling if you like and give them a shake out. And then we'll just have a few quiet breaths lying down. Good. Okay, so you can finish either with your arms and hands by your side or your hands on the front of your body. Just letting yourself, after all this movement, just letting yourself rest quietly, aware of the flow of the breath through your body, but also aware in a sort of very, very spacious, general way of the whole of your body, the ground beneath you, the weight of your body on the floor, the air, and your skin sounds near and more distant. Thank you. There's no rush, Sheila. Or anything. No, you need to get on to <laughs> look after look after on Bertie. So yes, thank you, Kara. Yeah, I've tried to cope with the ceiling. The ceiling is so low in the attic here. So you've done well. Up yeah, <laughs> but it's when when we do. I, yeah. I, that's when I'll go onto my knees. I think. So. Okay. Bye all, lovely to see everyone. Bye. Bye.